A nitrogen vacancy center NV center is one of numerous point defects in diamond. Its most explored and useful property is photoluminescence, which can be easily detected from an individual NV center, especially those in the negative charge state NV Electron spins at NV centers, localized at atomic scales, can be manipulated at room temperature by applying a magnetic field, electric field, microwave radiation or light, or a combination, resulting in sharp resonances in the intensity and wavelength of the photoluminescence. These resonances can be explained in terms of electron spin related phenomena such as quantum entanglement, spin orbit interaction, and Rabi oscillations, and analyzed using advanced quantum optics theory. An individual NV center can be viewed as a basic unit of a quantum computer, and it has potential applications in novel, more efficient fields of electronics and computational science including quantum cryptography, spintronics and masers. <laughs> Structure The nitrogen vacancy center is a point defect in the diamond lattice. It consists of a nearest neighbor pair of a nitrogen atom, which substitutes for a carbon atom, and a lattice vacancy. Two charge states of this defect, neutral NV0 and negative NV-, are known from spectroscopic studies using optical absorption, photoluminescence place, electron paramagnetic resonance and optically detected magnetic resonance which can be viewed as a hybrid of place and EPR. Most details of the structure originate from EPR. A nitrogen atom has five valence electrons. Three of them covalently bond to the carbon atoms and two remain non-bonded and are called a lone pair. The vacancy has three unpaired electrons. Two of them make a quasi-covalent bond and one remains unpaired. The overall symmetry, however, is axial trigonal C3V. one can visualize this by imagining the three unpaired vacancy electrons continuously exchanging their roles. The NV0 thus has one unpaired electron and is paramagnetic. However, despite extensive efforts, electron paramagnetic resonance signals from NV0 avoided detection for decades until 2008. Optical excitation is required to bring the NV0 defect into the EPR detectable excited state. The signals from the ground state are presumably too broad for EPR detection. The NV0 centers can be converted into NV- by changing the Fermi level position. This can be achieved by applying external voltage to a PN junction made from doped diamond, e.g., in a Schottky diode. In the negative charge state NV, an extra electron is located at the vacancy site, forming a spin S equals 1 pair with one of the vacancy electrons. As in NV0, the vacancy electrons are exchanging roles, preserving the overall trigonal symmetry. This NV state is what is commonly, and somewhat incorrectly, called the nitrogen vacancy center. The neutral state has not yet been explored for spin manipulations. The NV centers are randomly oriented within a diamond crystal. Ion implantation techniques can enable their artificial creation in predetermined positions. Topic production Nitrogen vacancy centers are typically produced from single substitutional nitrogen centers called C or P1 centers in diamond literature by irradiation followed by annealing at temperatures above 700 degrees Celsius. A wide range of high-energy particles are suitable for such irradiation, including electrons, protons, neutrons, ions, and gamma photons. Irradiation produces lattice vacancies, which are a part of NV centers. Those vacancies are immobile at room temperature, and annealing is required to move them. 
Single substitutional nitrogen produces strain in the diamond lattice, it therefore efficiently captures moving vacancies, producing the NV centers. During chemical vapor deposition of diamond, a small fraction of single substitutional nitrogen impurity typically Topic. Basic optical properties NV centers emit bright red light which can be conveniently excited by visible light sources, such as argon or krypton lasers, frequency doubled ND, YAG lasers, DI lasers, or HE-NE lasers. Excitation can also be achieved at energies below that of zero phonon emission. Laser illumination, however, also converts some NV- into NV0 centers. Emission is very quick, relaxation time approximately 10 nanoseconds. At room temperature, no sharp peaks are observed because of the thermal broadening. However, cooling the NV- centers with liquid nitrogen or liquid helium dramatically narrows the lines down to a width of a few megahertz. An important property of the luminescence from individual NV- centers is its high temporal stability. Whereas many single molecular emitters bleach after emission of 106 to 108 photons, no bleaching is observed for the NV centers at room temperature. Because of these properties, the ideal technique to address the NV centers is confocal microscopy, both at room temperature and at low temperature. In particular, low temperature operation is required to specifically address only the zero phonon line ZPL. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Energy level structure and its manipulation by external fields. The energy level structure of the NV center was established by combining optical, electron paramagnetic resonance and theoretical results, as shown in the figure. In particular, several theoretical works have been done, using the linear combination of atomic orbitals LCAO approach, to build the electronic orbitals to describe the possible quantum states, looking at the NV center as a molecule. Moreover, group theory results are used, to take into account the symmetry of the diamond crystal, and so the symmetry of the NV itself. The energy levels are labeled according to the group theory, and in particular are labeled after the irreducible representations of the C3V symmetry group of the defect center, A1, A2 and E. The numbers 3 in 3A and 1 in 1A represent the number of allowable MERS spin states, or the spin multiplicity, which range from S to S for a total of 2S plus 1 possible states. If S equals 1, MERS can be minus 1, 0, or 1. The 1A level is predicted by theory but not directly observed in experiment, and it is believed to play an important role in the quenching of photoluminescence. In the absence of an external magnetic field, the ground and excited states are split by the magnetic interaction between the two unpaired electrons at the NV center. See microscopic model. When two electrons have parallel spins, MERS equals plus or minus one, their energy is higher than when spins are antiparallel, MERS equals zero. The farther apart the electrons are, the weaker their interaction energy d roughly d approximately 1, r3. Thus the smaller splitting in the excited state can be viewed in terms of larger electron-electron separation in the excited state. When an external magnetic field is applied to the NV- center, it does not affect the MERS equals 0 states nor the 1A state because it has s. Topic zero, but it splits the mus plus or minus one levels. 
If a magnetic field is oriented along the defect axis and reaches about 1027 g or 508 g, then the MUS topic minus one and MUS zero states in the ground or excited state become equal in energy they strongly interact resulting in so-called spin polarization which strongly affects the intensity of optical absorption and luminescence transitions involving those states this happens because transitions between electronic states are mediated by a photon which cannot change overall spin Thus optical transitions must preserve the total spin and occur between levels of the same total spin. For this reason, transitions 3E e left right arrow 1A and 1A left right arrow 3A are non-radiative and quench the luminescence. Whereas MUS topic minus 1 excited state left right arrow MUS Zero ground state transition was forbidden in the absence of an external magnetic field, it becomes allowed when a magnetic field mixes the MUS. Minus 1 and MUS Zero levels in the ground state as a measurable outcome of this phenomenon, luminescence intensity can be strongly modulated by magnetic field. An important property of the non-radiative transition between 3E and 1A is that it is stronger for MUS. <laughs> Plus or minus 1 and weaker for MUS. Zero. This property results in a very useful manipulation of NV center, which is called optical spin polarization. First, consider an off-resonance excitation which has a higher frequency, typically 2.32 electron volts, 532 nanometers, than the frequencies of all transitions, and thus lays in the vibronic bands for all transitions. By using a pulse of this wavelength, people can excite all spin states and create phonons as well. For a spin state with MUS. Topic <laughs> 0 Due to conservation of spin in transition, it will be excited to the corresponding MUS. 0 state in 3E and then go back to original state. However, for a spin state with MUS. Topic. Plus or minus 1 in 3A, after the excitation, it has a relatively high probability to jump to the intermediate state 1A by non-radiative transition and go to the ground state with MUS. Zero. After sufficient cycles, the state of the NV center can be regarded as in the MUS equals zero state. Such a process can be used in the initialization of quantum state in quantum information processing. There is an additional level splitting in the excited 3E e state due to the orbital degeneracy and spin orbit interaction. Importantly, this splitting can be modulated by applying a static electric field, in a similar fashion to the magnetic field mechanism outlined above, though the physics of the splitting is somewhat more complex. Nevertheless, an important practical outcome is that the intensity and position of the luminescence lines can be modulated by applying electric or, and magnetic fields. The energy difference between the MUS topic 0 and MUS plus or minus 1 states corresponds to the microwave region 
Thus by irradiating the NV centers with microwave radiation, one can change the relative population of those levels, thereby again modulating the luminescence intensity. There is an additional splitting of the MERS equals plus or minus one energy levels, which originates from the hyperfine interaction between the nuclear and electron spins. Thus finally, the optical absorption and luminescence from the NV- center consists of roughly a dozen sharp lines with a separation in the megahertz GHZ range, and all those lines can be resolved, given proper sample preparation. The intensity and position of those lines can be modulated using the following tools Amplitude and orientation of magnetic field, which splits the MERS equals plus or minus one levels in the ground and excited states. Amplitude and orientation of elastic field strain, which can be applied by, e.g., squeezing the diamond. Similar effects can be induced by applying electric field, and the electric field can be controlled with much higher precision. Continuous wave microwave radiation, which changes the population of the sublevels within the ground and excited state. Tunable laser, which can selectively excite certain sublevels of the ground and excited state. In addition to those static perturbations, numerous dynamic effects spin echo, Rabi oscillations, etc. can be exploited by applying a carefully designed sequence of microwave pulses. The first pulse coherently excites the electron spins, and this coherence is then manipulated and probed by the subsequent pulses. Those dynamic effects are rather important for practical realization of quantum computers, which ought to work at high frequency. It should be noted that the above described energy structure is by no means exceptional for a defect in diamond or other semiconductor. It was not this structure alone, but a combination of several favorable factors previous knowledge, easy production and excitation, etc. which suggested the use of the NV- center. <laughs> <laughs> Spin dynamics Thinking of the NV- center as a multi-electronic system, we can draw the diagram in the figure at right, where the states are labeled according to their symmetry and with a left superscript that indicates with a 3 if it is a triplet S equals 1 and with a 1 if it is a singlet S equals 0. It is well accepted today that we have two triplet states and two intermediate singlet states. The optical excitations conserve the spin state, but there is a high probability of the states 3 e plus or minus 1 text style left caret 3 text e pm 1 right wrangle decaying non-radiatively to the singlet state 1 a 1 text style left caret 1 text a underscore 1 right wrangle a phenomenon called intersystem crossing isc this happens at an appreciable rate because the energy curve in function of the position of the atoms for the 3 E plus or minus one text style left carrot three text E PM one right wrangle state intersects the curve for the one a one text style left carrot one text a underscore one right wrangle state Therefore, for some instant during the vibrational relaxation that the ions undergo after the excitement, it is possible for the spin to flip with little or no energy required in the transition. It is important to note that this mechanism also leads to a transition from 3 e 0 Text style left carrot three text e zero right wrangle 
2 1 a 1 text style left caret 1 text a underscore 1 right wrangle but the rate of this isc is much lower than the 3 e plus or minus 1 text style left caret 3 text e pm 1 right wrangle states rate, therefore this transition is indicated with a thin line. The diagram also shows the non-radiative and infrared competing decay paths between the two singlet states, and the fine splitting in the triplet states, whose differences in energy correspond to microwave frequencies. Some authors explain the dynamics of the NV- center by admitting that the transition from 1 e text style left caret 1 text e right wrangle 2 3 a 2 plus or minus 1 text style left caret 3 text a underscore 2 pm 1 right wrangle is small, but as Robledo et al. shows, only the fact that the probability of decaying to 1 a 1 text style left caret 1 text a underscore 1 right wrangle is smaller for 3 e 0 Text style left carrot three text e zero right wrangle than four three e plus or minus one text style left carrot three text e pm one right wrangle is enough to polarize the spin to mus equals zero equals Topic: Potential applications. Equals the spectral shape and intensity of the optical signals from the NV minus centers are sensitive to external perturbation, such as temperature, strain, electric and magnetic field. However, the use of spectral shape for sensing those perturbation is impractical, as the diamond would have to be cooled to cryogenic temperatures to sharpen the NV- signals. A more realistic approach is to use luminescence intensity rather than line shape, which exhibits a sharp resonance when a microwave frequency is applied to diamond that matches the splitting of the ground state levels. The resulting optically detected magnetic resonance signals are sharp even at room temperature, and can be used in miniature sensors. Such sensors can detect magnetic fields of a few nanotesla or electric fields of about 10 volts per centimeter at kilohertz frequencies after 100 seconds of averaging. This sensitivity allows detecting a magnetic or electric field produced by a single electron located tens of nanometers away from an NV- center. Using the same mechanism, the NV- centers were employed in scanning thermal microscopy to measure high resolution spatial maps of temperature and thermal conductivity. See image. Another possible use the NV- centers is as a detector to measure the full mechanical stress tensor in the bulk of the crystal. For this application, the stress-induced splitting of the zero phonon line is exploited, and its polarization properties. A robust frequency modulated radio receiver using the electron spin dependent photoluminescence that operated up to 350 degrees Celsius demonstrates the possibility for use in extreme conditions. In addition to the quantum optical applications, luminescence from the NV centers can be applied for imaging biological processes, such as fluid flow in living cells. 
This application relies on good compatibility of diamond nanoparticles with the living cells and on favorable properties of photoluminescence from the NV- centers strong intensity, easy excitation and detection, temporal stability, etc. Compared with large single crystal diamonds, nanodiamonds are cheap about one United States dollar per gram and available from various suppliers. NV- centers are produced in diamond powders with sub-micrometer particle size using the standard process of irradiation and annealing described above. Those nanodiamonds are introduced in a cell, and their luminescence is monitored using a standard fluorescence microscope. Further, NV center has been hypothesized to be a potential biomimetic system for emulating radical pair spin dynamics of the avian compass. Stimulated emission from the NV center has been demonstrated, though it could be achieved only from the phonon sideband, i.e., broadband light, and not from the ZPL. For this purpose the center has to be excited at wavelength longer than approximately 650 nm, as higher energy excitation ionizes the center, the first continuous wave room temperature maser has been demonstrated. It used 532 nm pumped NV centers held within a high per cell factor microwave cavity and an external magnetic field of 4300 G. Continuous maser oscillation generated a coherent signal at approximately 9.2 GHz. The NV center can have a very long spin coherence time approaching the second regime. This is advantageous for applications in quantum sensing and quantum communication. Disadvantageous for these applications is the long radiative lifetime approximately 12 nanoseconds of the NV center and the strong phonon sideband in its emission spectrum. Both issues can be addressed by putting the NV center in an optical cavity. Topic: Historical remarks. The microscopic model and most optical properties of ensembles of the NV- centers have been firmly established in the 1970s based on the optical measurements combined with uniaxial stress and on the electron paramagnetic resonance. However, a minor error in EPR results it was assumed that illumination is required to observe NV-EPR signals resulted in the incorrect multiplicity assignments in the energy level structure. In 1991 it was shown that EPR can be observed without illumination, which established the energy level scheme shown above. The magnetic splitting in the excited state has been measured only recently. The characterization of single NV centers has become a very competitive field nowadays, with many dozens of papers published in the most prestigious scientific journals. One of the first results was reported back in 1997. In that paper, it was demonstrated that the fluorescence of single NV centers can be detected by room temperature fluorescence microscopy and that the defect shows perfect photostability. Also, one of the outstanding properties of the NV center was demonstrated, namely, room temperature optically detected magnetic resonance. Topic. See also Crystallographic defects in diamond Crystallographic defect Material properties of diamond